Today, I'll be looking around every corner, under every rock, and even in the skies of Paldea for shiny dragon types, so I can build the ultimate shiny dragon team to see if they're strong enough to beat Pokemon Violet. And I picked Violet over Scarlet for today's video because it has more dragon types available, but one of my favorite dragon types is actually a Scarlet exclusive, so my adventure starts over there. Oh! Shiny! <laughs> Switch. Oh no, I was looking at Facebook. Oh, that's. Oh, I can't believe I admitted that. Oh, I was looking at Facebook. Oh no. Oh, I said it again. No. No, censor it. Someone, someone censor it. But yes, yeah, Shiny, let's go. Oh, I was looking at Facebook. No! <laughs> Look at him though, he's so cute. Oh, is it? <laughs> I named my substitute starter Roughnut. And while Roughnut is an absolute cutie, it isn't the strongest Pokemon around, and it's definitely going to struggle against Katie and her bug types. So I decided to hunt for another shiny dragon. And seriously, don't try this next hunt at home. It took me so long, I started bolding, and now I refuse to go outside without a hat on. So I'd skip this hunt if you want to save your own hairline. My target was Applin, and I tried hunting it in this tree, but it just wasn't spawning enough. So I ended up just catching two normal ones and breeding them together until it finally shined. And well, this took me over a week of constant hunting. Yes! Yes! Yes, it's real! Oh, <laughs> I messed up the camera! Oh, shiny apple, it's real! Yes! He's green! I'm never eating red apples again, dude. Oh my god, look at him. Yes! I've woken my dog up at 6 a.m. My bad. I was finally able to add a second dragon to the team, and we named this one Tough Knight. You know, just to be confusing. And I waste no time at all evolving it into Flapple. And Tough Nut makes quick work of Katie and her bug types, one-shotting all of them with acrobatics, earning me a very quick and very easy first badge. After such a big battle, my dragon types were hungry, and news around town is that crab is on the menu. Now, I'm no chef, so I need Arvin's help to prepare the meal, and in return, I help him take it down. I terrestrialized Tough Nut to boost its dragon breath power, but even after a terror, it isn't doing much damage. Thankfully though, Cloth is basically just asking to be eaten as he completely throws the fight, letting Tough Nut and Shelda take it down. Arvin and I then harvest his meat and I feed my best dragon Maridon, and he loves it so much he can now run at sonic speeds. Speaking of sonic speeds, the Brassius fight is over before I can say, please whip me daddy and turn me into one of your French girls. That's another easy badge, but Tough and Rough Nut aren't strong enough to take on the next big fight of the run, Bombardier. And so I decided to hunt for one of the most annoying dragon types ever made, the newly added Cyclozar. I legit look into the abyss and question my will to continue in this world when one of these guys comes out of nowhere and runs into me at mock speed, interrupting whatever I was doing. But this time, I was actually hoping for them to run into me. Oh, shiny, shiny, shiny! Come here, come here, come here! Oh. Oh yes, let's go. Yes! Finally, level 22, that's sick. Okay, you might be thinking, why do I have a Tinker Tough? And it's because these things are very hard to kill, so I needed I needed to Tinker Tough. Everybody say hello to Fish Legs. Honestly, I feel like this shiny is super slept on, and I'm a big fan, but I barely hear people mention it, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. With Fish Legs on the team, Bombardier is actually a pretty easy fight, thanks to Breaking Swipe doing consistent damage and lowering the bird's attack stat. Though, it did bring Fish Legs down to just 23 HP, and we can't heal between phases. So, part 2 Revenge of the Emu is going to be a lot tougher. Fish Legs is able to get one Breaking Swipe off before having to switch into Rough Nut, and by the time Rough Nut attacks, Arvin's Knackley has already brought the Bombardier pretty low so a combo of Dragon Breath and Smackdown is enough to finish it off, winning one of the harder Titan fights. Fish Legs really carried us there, so now anyone who talks smack about him before will be banned, blocked, and publicly ridiculed. With Fish Legs on the team, Giacomo shouldn't be any trouble at all. Oh, 
I retract my previous statements. You may all now point and laugh at fish legs. Okay, it was attempt four, and this time I gave everyone wiki berries to try and keep them a bit healthier during the fight. And well, Rough Nut doesn't even use hers as Pineyard takes her out with two Fury Cutters, but it is left with red HP, so surely Tough Nut can come in and finish it off. Except it doesn't, because Acrobatics is now weakened thanks to the held wiki berry. So far, these berries aren't doing me any good. Thankfully, the helmet misses its Fury Cutter, so Tough Nut can finish it off with a second Acrobatics, bringing in the Monster Reverune. I taught Tough Nut Pounce to lower its speed while doing super effective damage, though it doesn't look all that effective. And after a couple of hits, it finally procs my yes. berry. Yes! Yes! Wiki berry! <laughs> you fool! Oh, that was... That wasn't actually that much HP back. That only gives 20? I thought that's how much citrus berry gives you. Oh man. Oh, I guess we just gotta hope we outspeed with it at minus four. I could cry. Oh, that healed nothing. Die. God damn it. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's pretty weakened. We definitely had speed with fish legs. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Okay, I think that wiki berries kept us in the game because I'm actually not even sure if this breaking swipe kills. Oh, please. Please, fish legs. <laughs> we pray it doesn't create or anything silly like that. I went for Metal Sand. Ah, we win. Outplayed, outsmarted, out everything. I'm the superior freaking gamer, dude. Yes. Wiki berries for the win. After losing three times to Giacomo, I thought the team needed some wholesome energy. So I started hunting for the second cutest shiny dragon in the franchise. And thankfully, this hunt didn't take me long at all, which was definitely a nice change of pace. Oh, shiny, 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 shiny. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yeah, I'll save. Yes. Oh my god. Hello. I uh, put Appleton up front, I guess. Right now. Hey, buddy. Boop. Yes! Shiny Swablu! So cute. Now, Bork is pretty cute, but I won't be able to show him off to Iono, which sucks because I bet his little smile would have gotten me a lot of channel points. And I wanted to give Fishlegs a much-needed break, so I decided to use Tough Nut, who has learned Dragon Dance, boosting his attack and speed by one. And thanks to healing from a Leech Seed, Tough Nut is able to get the plus six attack and speed with 15 HP remaining. And a Trailblaze from here easily one-shots Iono's Watch Roll. Luxio was next and brings Tough Nut down to plus five before being one-shot, which brings in Iono's Belly Bolt, who lives a plus five Trailblaze with yellow HP. And a spark is enough to knock out Tough Nut. I was pretty determined to win this battle without fish legs, so I bring in Rough Nut, who needs to hit two Dragon Breaths to finish the Belly Bolt off leaving Iono with her last Pokemon, Miss Magius. She confuses poor Roughnut, but Roughnut breaks through the confusion and tickles the electric ghost with a Dragon Breath. After seeing such a pathetic attack, I knew I'd have to bring in Fish Legs, and well, he's immune to Hex and resists Charge Beam, so a few breaking swipes ends the battle. Well, at least Fish Legs got most of the battle to rest. For my next hunt, I was looking for either a Gibble or a Bagon, two Dragon types that will be essential for the late game. But unfortunately, I ran into a different Dragon type instead. Oh, Shiny! Oh, hello! Oh, awesome. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm sorry the reaction was a bit low, but yes. What are you doing, Shiny! Noibat really wasn't what I wanted, and it wasn't going to help me out with Mela, so I decided to try again, praying for a Gibble or Bagon. Oh, I've got another Noibat, man. No. Die! I wanted a 
Gibble. Depressed. Okay. Well, let's try just one more time. But this time, I wasn't risking anything and found a Gibble outbreak. And from here, I was able to knock out 60 of them, drastically increasing my odds. Oh, that's shiny, right? Wait, wait, wait. God. Yeah, shiny Gibble. God, <laughs> I've been the gaslit and manipulated too much. I couldn't even tell. I add Astrid and Gronkle onto the team, but even with two new team members, I wasn't feeling all that confident in taking on Mela. But I've already spent so much time hunting, so I move forward and challenge the fiery team sub boss. I lead the battle with my little Gronkle, who counters Torkoal's drought with Rain Dance, weakening its fire type moves. Torkoal is pretty tanky and it doesn't take too much damage from Bulldoze, which might have been a problem if Gronkle didn't resist all of its moves. This means that Gronkle can take Torkoal out while still above half HP. But next for Mela was her Reveroom, who Gronkle is able to chip with a couple of Bulldozers before feigning to burn damage. I then bring in Fishlegs, who isn't doing much damage with Breaking Swipes, but is lowering the Starmobile's own offensive power. And once at minus five attack, I decide to switch out fish legs and bring in Roughnut, who terrestrializes and lands a very weak Dragon Breath. But the Starmobile is doing even less damage, so Roughnut can finish it off with a couple more Dragon Breaths. And that was definitely an awkward fight, but it all ended out in my favor. After beating Mela, I was feeling pretty confident, so I wasted no time at all taking on Kofu. And since I was so confident, I thought Toughnut could easily one-shot all of Kofu's Pokemon. Man, they always live on 1 HP, I swear. Unfortunately, Roughnut couldn't sweep Kofu, but he left the crab with 1 HP. So I just bring in Fish Legs and finish the 1 HP off with a Breaking Swipes, earning me my fourth badge. And after the fight, Gronkle evolves into the beautiful Shiny Gabite. I sure do hope that this Shiny line doesn't get ruined at the final stage. That would... <laughs> That would suck. Although I didn't clean sweep Kofu, I was still feeling super strong. So I go to take on the Orthworm. But it's one of the very few bosses in this run that could be soloed by Roughnut and her Fire Fangs. And now with a new level cap of 36, I'm able to evolve Bork into Altaria, which is one of the best shinies in the game and definitely the fluffiest dragon ever made. Now while Bork did get a lot fluffier, it didn't get all that stronger. So I was still super nervous to take on Atticus, but it had to be done. So off I went, challenging one of the most annoying Team Star boss battles. I lead with Bork and Atticus leads with one stinky boy, but Bork stops it from attacking by putting it to sleep with Sing. I then land two Dragon Pulses before it wakes up and it poisons Bork but I did give him a Petra Berry, curing it straight away. The Skunk Take then outspeeds the next turn with a Sucker Punch, and it flinches? So it has the ability Stench, which gives it a 10% flinch chance, which I didn't know, but it doesn't stop Bork from knocking it out on the next turn, but now he's not as healthy as he should be. So I had to make a desperate play and tried to put Muck to sleep with Sing, but it misses and the incoming Sludge Wave actually poisons Bork. This fight has been extremely unlucky so far. I try to fish for the sleep again, but miss, and Muck knocks Bork out with another sludge wave. I then decide it's now or never to set up with Tough Nut. I terrestrialize to avoid super effective damage from sludge wave and start powering up with Dragon Dance. Tough Nut is able to get to plus two before having to attack, but a plus two acrobatics isn't even enough to one shot Muck. So another sludge wave KOs Tough Nut, and that's another win con down the drain. I bring in Roughnut who is ready to avenge her twin and after two dragon breaths I'm finally able to KO the muck. Atticus then brings in their small Reva room and it instantly outspeeds and destroys Roughnut with an iron head. Thankfully though it is four times weak to ground type moves so I bring in Gronkle but Reva room outspeeds again and lands a pretty nasty iron head bringing Gronkle below half HP before he gets one shot by his bulldoze. I'm left with half a team and Atticus is left with his Starmobile. I decide to sack Astrid because well she just isn't that useful and the Starmobile uses Spin Out, which is perfect because it's lowered its own speed. Astrid then gets murked by a Noxus Torque, but now I can bring in Captain Fishlegs for free, who now outspeeds thanks to the Spin Out drop and can start spamming Breaking Swipe, though the Reveroom is recovering its speed with Flame Charge. 
and now it's sadly back to outspeeding fish legs but is now at minus two attack and it poisoned me well that sucks fish legs is able to get it under half hp before being taken out and now it's all up to my half hp gronkle thanks to fish legs though the starmobile is doing negative damage so Gronkle can finish it off with two bulldozers. That was a super tough battle and we barely clutched it up at the end. But if my dragons could handle Atticus, they'll have no problem against Larry. I promise after this fight I'll do another hunt, I was just on the warpath. Larry hasn't been much of a challenge in my previous runs, so I decided to start with Roughnut, who gets outspeed by Komolo of all things and is hit by a yawn. Her crunch then half shots the Australian icon in retaliation, because Roughnut ain't ready to nap. Kamala then slams Roughnut, like literally, and this wouldn't be a big problem, but Roughnut misses her crunch thanks to Hustle, so she gets knocked out on the next turn by another slam. Well, I tried to give her the spotlight. No more mucking around though, as I bring in the other twin, and Dragon Dance and Iron Defense, before taking Kamala out with a Grab Apple. Next was the Dunsparce, but two Grab Apples knock it out, though it did paralyze Toughnut. So, Staraptor comes out and outspeeds and brings Tough Nut into the red with Aerial Ace, as he hits a weak grab apple in return. I decide just to let Tough Nut faint so I can bring in Fish Legs, who can terror and knock Staraptor out with two breaking swipes, earning me my fifth badge. We interrupt this program to inform you all of the mass outbreak of absolute cuties on Glacido Mountains. The risk of cuteness induced coma is extremely high, please only visit at your own risk. That's right, my next hunt was for the newest pseudo-legendary, Baxcalibur, a Pokemon I've never used before so I was pretty excited. And thanks to using an Encounter Power 2 sandwich, I was able to find him after a couple of days of hunting. Wait, is that... is that shoddy? It's gotta be, right? No, let's, let's just check, let's just check. Yes! Shoddy freaking bags! Let's go! Why oh, are so cute? Look at him. Gobba is pretty cute, but I need to evolve him if I want to beat Rhyme. And man, do I just love this secondary evolution. And I really think it should have been the final evolution. It looks so cute and so cool. Baxcalibur definitely is awesome, but it just doesn't compare to its secondary form. Well, the Rat Queen of Paldea isn't going to beat herself. So, let's get it done. I live with Bork and Gobba. And they double team her Bayonet for a free KO, and because I Terrastalize, I get an Omni Boost. This allows Bork and Goba to double up on her Houndstone to take it out as well. And I'm just ignoring Mimikyu here because it doesn't actually have a fairy type move, so it doesn't really threaten my team. Ryan brings in a Toxtricity, but thanks to the free stat boost, a double up of Dragon Pulse from Bork and Dragon Claw from Goba easily takes it out. And this leaves her with just her Mimikyu, who isn't strong enough to survive the onslaught of attacks from my shiny dragons. Okay, those last few fights were pretty easy, but the next two gyms are going to be super tough, because we've hit that point of the game where the gym leaders have fully evolved Pokemon, and I'm stuck with middle stage dragons. And Tulip is a bit of a monster, especially for my team, because well, she has two fairy types who are both capable of one-shotting my whole team. So I decide I should do another hunt, and maybe that will be the edge I need to beat Tulip. And my target is considered one of the best shinies ever made. My target was Axew, and I won't lie, this hunt was sending me a bit insane. Because when checking Axews, I was looking for the scarf color, which changes from green to purple. But Axews open their mouths. A lot. This combined with the snow, my poor eyesight, and my probable schizophrenia made this a lot more painful than it should have been. Wait, is that... Is that shiny or am I going crazy again? That's... That's gotta be shiny, right? It... It's gotta be. It's so much lighter. <laughs> yes! Alright, it is. Oh, that's awesome. Finally, dude. Oh, look at him, he's so cute. Look at him, look up a little bork. Hey, buddy. Go sleep now. Oh, okay. I add Toothless to the team and waste no time evolving him. And I know Haxorus gets a lot of hype, but can we just take a second to appreciate Fracture's shiny? The blue tips and spots look so good, and it's sad that it gets overshadowed so much by Haxorus. Please spread the word of Fracture. Well, enough stalling, it's time to challenge Tulip. I live with Bork and she leads with Frigarath. And for some very dumb reason, I thought Frigarath was a dark psychic type. 
so I use Moonblast and it does barely any damage as it sets up a reflect. I really need those screens to disappear, so I start spamming Sing. It takes a few attempts, but I eventually do hit the Sing and the reflect fades away. Bork then brings it into the red with a Dragon Pulse, and then on the next turn, it sadly wakes up and brings Bork into the red with a Zen Headbutt, before being knocked out by another Dragon Pulse. But now the monster comes to play as she sends in Gardevoir. I get lucky and hit a Sing, putting it to sleep, and then I get super lucky with a crit Moonblast that also lowers its special attack. And then I hit a second crit, but Gardevoir wakes up that turn and finishes Bork off with a Dazzling Gleam. I bring in Tough Nut who is able to tank a Dazzling Gleam thanks to the special attack drop and finishes Gardevoir off with a Grab Apple. Esparthra was third and it outspeeds Tough Nut and knocks him out with a Psychic. I bring in Gronkle who lends two pretty decent bulldozers but then gets knocked out by another Psychic. So I bring in Fish Legs and Dragon Claw Esparthra for the kill, which leaves Tulip with her second fairy. Flawless. Thankfully it shreds its dragon immunity, but it's still super tanky, leaving a terror boosted dragon claw with over half of its HP remaining. Flawless then one shots fish legs with a crit moonblast, and from here it one shots both gobba and toothless with moonblast. So I caught a fat L, but I'm ready to try again. And I caught another L. Okay, so I just went to go stop the recording and realize I didn't even start the recording. So here we are. Uh, this is the aftermath of my victory tulip fight. I got pretty lucky. I killed I killed Frigarath with fish legs and then I brought in Gronkle, slowed down Gardevoir, was able to set up to plus one on Tough Nut and then killed Gardevoir, Esparthra and then brought Florges pretty low and then I brought in Bork, tear it into a flying type and then, you know, just moonblasted it until it died. Uh, really unfortunate that I didn't get to record it, but, you, you know, here is, here is, here is the aftermath. It's, this is tragic. I'm not very good at my job, apparently. Now, I definitely didn't need a new shiny, but I wanted to avoid the last part of this video being all hunting. So in an effort to split it up, I started another hunt. My target, Shell God. Not all that impressive, but it would eventually evolve into one of the strongest dragon types available. And I was super lucky, and this hunt only took me a couple of hours. Oh! Yeah, shiny! Let's go! It's a lot less green than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. It's like really pale. Yes! And with a new level cap of 48, a few of my dragons evolve, like Gronkle. Quite possibly one of the most hated shinies, but having a guard chump on the team is super exciting. I follow up one of the worst shinies with one of the best as Toothless fully evolves into shiny Haxorus, and you can see why it's so loved. And last but not least was Astrid, who evolves into a Noivern, and now surely she won't be as useless. Well now it's time for another super tough gym battle. Grusha here uses ice types, which historically are dragon killers, so I needed a plan. I start off with Gronkle and set up a Stealth Rocks as Froth Moth one shots him with Blizzard. I then bring in Fish Legs, who sets up the sun with a sunny day, before also being one shot by Blizzard. But this was all part of my plan, as I bring in Astrid, who has her first big battle appearance, and she starts things off by one shotting Frost Moth with Flamethrower. Fair Tech was next for Grusha, but Flamethrower is able to KO it pretty easily thanks to the sun we set up. Bringing in Sir Titan, but unfortunately this Pokemon has the Thick Fat ability, which means it's able to live a Flamethrower and knocks Astrid out with a 4x super effective Ice Spinner. I send out Goba who is able to bring the Titan into the red with a Dragon Claw before fainting to two Ice Spinners. I then send out Bork who finally finishes the Titan off with a Dragon Pulse, leaving Grusha with his last Pokemon, Altaria. His bird terrestrializes but Bork outspeeds and gets a special attack drop with Moonblast, allowing him to live a 4x super effective Ice Beam. Bork then lands one more Moonblast before being blasted himself, leaving me with my last Pokemon Toothless, who outspeeds and hits a Terra boosted Outrage for the win. And just like that, I beat one of our hardest matches in one attempt. So this went a lot better than Tulip did. Now normally I'd take on Ortega before the last Titan, but this last Titan fight is pretty easy with my current team, so I decided to take it on first. And yeah, it was one of the easier Dondonzo Tatsugiri fights, so not much to comment on here. Okay guys, when I say I really didn't want to do this Ortega fight, I mean I was seriously dreading it. So instead, I'm going to talk about Shiny Tatsugiri. This is Curly Tatsugiri. This is Shiny Curly Tatsugiri. 
and this is droopy Totsugiri, and this is shiny droopy Giri, which looks pretty dope. And then there's stretch Giri, and this is its shiny, which looks oddly like both curly fawns. Yeah, this hunt was 20 times worse than the Axie one, but after squinting at every orange fish I could see, I eventually did run into the slightly different orange fish. Yes! Wait, that's shiny! Yes! Oh, I've kicked my switch. Stay, stay, stay. Oh, okay. Shiny Tatsugiri. It's the most boring one, but it's it's here. We did it. Okay, this is the first and only time I'll ever be nervous to take on Ortega, but I did have a plan. I start by terrestrializing Bork into a pure flying type, just in case I miss a scene. But he hits, avoiding any damage for this turn. I then use Perish Song, and with this, Azumarill is guaranteed to faint in 3 turns. So now all I have to do is stall for those 3 turns, and I do this with Protect and by putting it back to sleep on the final turn. The count falls to 0, but I forgot about one crucial part of the plan. I was meant to switch Bork out before the last turn, so both Bork and Azumarill faint to Perish Song. This was really really dumb, and from here Ortega is able to carry the rest of my team but I was able to bring the Starmobile somewhat low, so I had good faith in my plan. I just needed to not be dumb. So I try again, and this time I successfully knock Azumarill out with Peristong, but this time I bring out Fish Legs so Bork didn't faint as well. Next for Ortegra was Wigglytuff, so I bring Bork back in, and once again stall the Wigglytuff out to the final Peristong turn. So I switch into Fish Legs, who was almost okoed by a play rough, but at the end of the turn, Wigglytuff faints bringing in Ortega's dash bind. Fish Legs is able to chip it with a Terra Blast before being taken out by a play rough. I then bring Bork back in as dash bind misses a play rough and Bork gets to set up another song. But I didn't really need to do this, I could have just attacked but I was a little bit too addicted to the source. I try to put the dash bind to sleep but I miss. Now we are both on the final count but Bork is on 29 HP so I just let her faint to the song. But he lands a Terra Blast before falling to sleep, and yeah, I could have just knocked it out in two turns, but you know, it is what it is. Ortega is now left with his Starmobile. I bring in Tatsugiri, who tanks a Steel Roller like it's nothing, and then retaliates with a Muddy Water, which lowers the Starmobile's accuracy. This comes in clutch straight away, as the Starmobile misses a Magical Torque. So, Tatsu can land another big Muddy Water. The Starmobile then misses again, and this accuracy drop is really helping me out. And then it finally lands an attack, but it's just a Confuse Ray, so Tatsu can bring it into the red before finally being hit by a Magical Torque, getting one shot. But with the Starmobile being so low, I can bring in Tough Nut and finish it off. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. Thankfully, Tough Nut lives a Magical Torque with 10 HP and can finally finish off Ortegra with one more Grab Apple and I promise I'll never fear this Ortega fight ever again. I now finally get to evolve all of my dragons. Well, e except for Rough Nut, who still can't fully evolve, but hey, at least I got two of them now. I then evolve Shelgon into Salamence, who does look pretty dope in this game, I won't lie. I'm normally a huge 3D hater, but they did a pretty good job here. And to finish things off, Gobra evolves into his final form, Bax Calibar, which also looks pretty damn clean, and will be a huge help for these final fights. Well now it's time to take on the final Team Star boss. Airy leads with Toxicroak and I start things off with Fish Legs. I use Shed Tail to bring in Salamence who I've yet to give a nickname. I try to get a Dragon Dance while behind the sub but it does get broken on the first turn. But I'm able to set up to plus 2 but then Toxicroak poisons Salamence with Poison Jab. I then misclick a third Dragon Dance causing Salamence to tank more Poison Chip. I go to Oko, Toxicroak with Zed Headbutt, but Salamence misses and is left pretty low from the poison. I do have leftovers though, so I heal it back up a little. Thankfully it lands a Zen Headbutt on the next turn, easily Okoing it, but Salamence then faints the poison. This is why you don't get a nickname. I bring in Astrid who is able to one-shot Parsimian with Air Slash, and this is why she got a nickname. Eri then brings out one of her scariest Pokemon, Annihilate who tanks an Air Slash like it was nothing, and one-shots Astrid with Ice Punch. I then bring in Tatsugiri, but a crit close combat one-shots my little fish. 
and that's also why he didn't get a nickname. Well, I guess it's all up to Bork. He gets half shot straight away by an ice punch, but is able to knock Annihilate out with a flying Terra Blast. Bork is then able to two shot Lucario, but it did bring him pretty low. So I wasn't feeling very confident about taking on the Starmobile. It starts by setting up a shift gear and Bork's Terra Blast does insane damage. But surely at plus one, Bork isn't going to survive anything. But she dodges thanks to friendship and brings the Starmobile into the red. But now surely it's time for Bork to faint. But he lives on one HP. The power of friendship is too strong as he finishes the battle off with one more Terra Blast. I definitely didn't deserve to win that fight, but I'll take it. That's the final fight before the Elite Four. Okay, I've got one more very important shiny hunt. My target is the first Dragon type ever released, Dragonite. Ain't no way I'm doing a Dragon only challenge and not adding my boy to the team. Oh, shiny! Yes, yes, Stratini! Oh. No! I was just about to... I was just about to try and reset. No, it's running away. Come back. Yeah, Shiny Dratini! Get out of here, Dreepy. Yes! Hello! Finally! No, don't run away. Don't run away. Come here. I didn't get the save. Yes, look at it! Oh, it's so cute. Look at that little noodle. I waste no time at all evolving Dratini into Dragonair and Dragonair into Dragonite. And now, I'm finally ready to take on the Elite Four. Okay, let's do this. Rika's Wish Cash gets KO'd by two Muddy Waters from Tatsu. She then brings in Dongfan, but Tatsu can't one-shot it thanks to its sturdy ability, so I bring in Dragonite, who is immune to Earthquake. Dragonite's Aqua Tail brings Dongfan below half HP, but it retaliates with a Stone Edge. That probably would have killed if it crit, but since it didn't, another Aqua Tail can take it out. Next is Dugtrio, who sets up the sand just to get Oko'd by another Aqua Tail, and well, Camerupt is four times weak to water type attack, so another Aqua Tail claims the KO, leaving Rika with her Clod Sire, who terrors into a pure ground type. So Dragonite's Aqua Tail should do massive damage. Oh, yeah, I um, forgot about that. But since Rika likes to use Protect, I decide to gamble a little and go for a Dragon Dance. And the gamble pays off as I get a free plus one in Dragonite's attack. And with this boost, Outrage can one shot Clod Sire, winning the first match. Next was Poppy, but Astrid is able to outspeed and two-shot her whole team. Well, except for Tinker Tongue, who outspeeds and KOs Astrid with a play rough, sadly ending her fiery reign. I then send in Gronkle, who is able to half-shot Tinker Tongue with a bulldoze before being hit by Gigaton Hammer, because I guess when you have a move that cool, you just gotta use it at least once. But Gronkle lives the attack, of course, and fires back with a second bulldoze for the KO. Larry time. Tropius gets one shot by Gobba, thanks to a four times super effective icicle crash. And then next is Staraptor, who intimidates him, so I switch him out for Salamance. Salamance then eats up two Brave Birds and sets up two Dragon Dancers. Salamance then proceeds to one shot Staraptor, and well, Altaria is weak to Dragon Claw, so that was another easy one shot. Oricorio also gets one shot by, well, yet another Dragon Claw, leaving Larry with Flamigo. And well, it gets one shot. Man, it feels good to finally be OP in this run. But next up is another dragon type user, so this might be a bit tougher. Well, I mean it would be, but I gave Gobba the choice scarf, which means he should be able to outspeed Hazel's whole team. And with 120 base power Glaive Rush, this fight is pretty damn easy. Outspeed and one shot is by far my favorite strat. Which brings us to one of the strongest trainers in Paldea, at least, you know, in, in universe. Let's see if my dragon types have what it takes. It's looking good as Gobble one shots a Sparthor with Glaive Rush. Bringing in Go Goat, who I think can live in attack since I'm choice scarfed into Glaive Rush. So I switch into Astrid, who has to tank a play rough. And sadly, her air slash doesn't KO, so Astrid has to tank a second play rough, being left pretty low, but is able to take the Goat out on the next turn. Beluva is next, and I just let it KO Astrid, as she isn't going to be much help for the rest of the fight anyway. And then I bring in Dragon Knight, and I freely set up a Dragon Dance. But the fish has Ice Fang, which I didn't know. So I guess freely was the wrong word. And then I forgot to give Dragon Knight Dragon Claw or Outrage, so all I can do is go for an Extreme Speed, which only does half of the fish's HP. So it takes Dragon Knight out with another Ice Fang. 
I then bring in Tatsu who outspeeds and takes the Infuria fish out with the Dragon Pulse. And this brings in Avalog. But since this thing has pretty bad special defense, two Dragon Pulses easily knock it out. But in comes the Toilet Overlord of Death, King Gambit, who tanks a Muddy Water and strikes Tatsu down. I then bring in Gronkle, and with a Quick Claw proc he's able to outspeed and hit a Bulldoze, but it fails to KO. But the incoming attack barely scratches him, so another Bulldoze can finish King Gambit off, leaving Gita with her Gamora. Gronkle half shots the Rock Squid before being taken down to red HP by Dazzling Gleam, but surely another Bulldoze KOs. Of course not. It lives on 1 HP and finishes Gronkle off, but I'm able to bring in Gobba and win the battle with another Glaive Rush. And that ends our Elite 4 run, which brings us to a very special moment. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Rough Nut evolved into her final form. Isn't she just beautiful? It's time for the final battle. Will Nimona be the final challenge or the final sweep? Let's find out. I know that she likes to use Stealth Rock's first turn with Lycanroc, so I abuse this to get a free Dragon Dance off. I then Terrestrialize to a pure Dragon type to get rid of Dragonite's Rock Weakness and set up a second Dragon Dance. And I get super lucky as Lycanroc misses its Stone Edge. Outrage then one-shots Lycanroc, which brings in Dedunce Bass, which also gets one-shot. Which then brings in Gudra, who, well, also gets one-shot. This is going great. Pulmont was next and Dragonite breaks through the confusion and one-shots the Pick a Clone. But then, the unthinkable happens. One of her Pokemon lives in attack. Yeah, her Orthworm resists the attack and has insane defense, so it lives with half HP and then hits a weak Iron Tail. Dragonite is able to finish it off with a Fire Punch on the next turn, leaving Miascarada. But Dragonite hits himself in the worst moment as Miascarada is then able to hit a massive player up leaving Dragonite with just 22 HP. Thankfully, he breaks through the next turn, Okoing the Tricky Cat with a Fire Punch. And if you guys want to see me beat Pokemon Violet with only shiny ghost types, click here, or just check out my shiny playlist altogether, where I've done a few of these types of challenges. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, see you next time.